These are our notes for our introduction on the periodic table unit, and we're going to have you just color this blank periodic table that we've given you so we can identify different areas of our periodic table. First, we'd like for you to label uh, down the rows 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. This will help us when we're talking about our periodic trends. Then we'd like for you to label the S and P block, which you know what those are already since we talked about them in the atom unit, with our Roman numerals. There's some questions with our practice problems that we'll do in this unit that deal with our Roman numerals and anything in the, the A columns, if you will. So when we're talking about the A columns, we're talking about things that are in the S and P block. So label those. You might need to hit pause a few times during this video to get the labeling that we're talking about here, but you can then hit unpause and go ahead and catch up. So then we'd like for you to label the S block, your S block, your D block, your P block, and then don't forget about the F block down here, so label the blocks. That again should be reviewed from the atoms unit. Then we'd like for you to fill in a few common elements here, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine and then also chlorine, bromine, and iodine. And fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, oxygen, nitrogen, and hydrogen make up these things called diatomic elements. We call it cliff brawn, and we will talk about that more in class and we'll draw them together. But it's important to remember that we've labeled those first. Those are called diatomic elements. Essentially, they are always paired up with another of its own element. That's why you always see hydrogen written by itself as H2, for example. We'll talk about that further, but just wanted to kind of introduce that idea. Then please label some metals here so that we have a frame of reference, copper, silver, and gold. And then also label zinc and aluminum. Silver, zinc, and aluminum have some important rules with them when we get to naming, so it's important that we remember where those are. Those are helpful. The lanthanide and actinide series, which are really part of the F block, start right here, so la label the lanthanide and actinide elements right there, please. And then francium, that's one of our most reactive radioactive metals, so go ahead and label that metal. Then we'd like for you to draw the stair step in. That's help this helps us separate our metals from our non-metals on our periodic table. So our stair step for us is in bright yellow. You can do really any of this in any color. You just need to make sure you know, you know what you're doing. Then we'd like for you to identify what your metals are. So right here we've highlighted ours in black. You can color in your whole periodic table. We decided just to outline ours so that you can still see the writing but the please label the metals in a certain color and then also don't forget to put your key down at the bottom. Then we'd like for you to label the nonmetals. Please be please note right here that it does not fully connect up with the metalloid stair step because those are a certain category in and of itself. And also don't forget that hydrogen is a nonmetal. And also don't forget to put your key down at the bottom. Just like I said, these are a little bit different. These are our metalloids. You don't necessarily need to write in the elements I did so that you could see them so it's a little bit easier to track which elements we're talking about. But those are our metalloids. Remember, metalloids have properties of metals or nonmetals depending on what it's bonding with. And again, update that in your key. Then I'd like for you to identify in the bottom corner that rows, series, and periods are what goes across. We will again talk about a lot of that. We'll talk about a row or a period and what the trend is with our periodic table unit so it's important that we remember that rows and periods are across. Columns, families, or groups are up and down. So columns, families, or, and groups are up and down. We will talk about relationships within families as well as relationships within a group. So it's important that we remember which way is which. And then it's also important to identify that hydrogen is a family by itself. Hydrogen is a family by itself, so that's important. Please write that down. Then we'd like for you to label the alkali earth metal, or excuse me, the alkali metals right here. These are very reactive. It's in that very first column, so label the alkali metals. The alkaline earth metals are the second column right here. These are, in the middle, are transition elements. Sometimes you'll hear us refer to them as the transition metals. The F block is the inner transition metals, so please kind of squeeze that label in there. The first row is the upper inner transition. IT just simply means inner transition. This is our lanthanide series. These are our rare earth elements. This is the lower inner transition metals. These are our actinides. 
All of these are radioactive. We won't deal very much with the F block in our class, but it's important that we know about it, where it is, and some of the properties. Then please go ahead and label the noble gases. Our noble gases are non-reactive, and we'll discuss more why in class, but hopefully that's a little bit of a review as to why they're non-reactive. Remember that happy octet, hopefully you learned from physical science. Then our next group in right here, the chlorine, fluorine, bromine, iodine group is our halogen group. These are reactive. These are reactive. And then we've got our boron group, our carbon group, our nitrogen group, and our oxygen group. Hopefully you're seeing the pattern there as it's the group with boron on top is the boron group, the group with carbon on top is the carbon group, and so on and so forth. The oxygen group you might hear being referred to as the chalogens, so if you ever hear that you know that that's also meaning the oxygen group. So from here you should have a relatively well labeled periodic table. We will reference this quite a lot when we, were talk when we are talking about our periodic trends during the periodic table unit. Thank you for coming to class ready with this done.